drink beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. Within this video I'll be sharing my methods, testing and results in respect of accuracy between three popular refractometers for homebrewers. Each of these three come in at rather different price points and part of the objective here is to show you what the difference actually is in terms of accuracy for your money. So let's get started. I decided that for this test I would brew something small using actual grain rather than using dried malt extract. My aim was a wart with a starting gravity of around 1.030 or thereabouts. This grain has been vacuum sealed and it has also been stored cool to keep its freshness. I milled this grain in the same way that I would for any other type of brew. I decided for this one to do a small brew in a bag batch which I used to use a great deal for my recipe test matches before it became possible to brew as little as 5 litres or 1.32 US gallon batches with the Brewzilla Gen 4. This batch was simply a mash with occasional stirring and I did this for just over one hour with a temperature of 65 degrees Celsius which is the equivalent of 149 degrees Fahrenheit. At the end of this mash I gave it a good break up and stir to push out some extra efficiency. I then set the bag aside and used a ladle to remove some of the wort into a wide bowl so that it will cool down much faster ready for the testing. While I was waiting for the mash I ensured that each of the three devices was properly calibrated. Screwdrivers were required for the regular refractometers whereas the Smart Ref handles this via its app. For calibration I used distilled water which will return a correct result of neutral, otherwise known as specific gravity 1.000. Here is a look at this process with the Smart Ref. You simply load the sample section to the top and the app provides the reading for you. I made sure that each of the three devices was showing a neutral gravity result with distilled water before continuing the testing. Let's now take a brief look at each of these with some details first and then the test result with the most expensive model first through to the cheapest at the end. The Smart Ref is by far the most expensive refractometer device here for this test and has a very impressive specification when it comes to accuracy. This is hardly surprising as this is a device from Anton Parr who are one of the world's leading manufacturers of measurement instruments to various industries including the commercial brewing industry. This device is intended for homebrewers use and is offered alongside the Easy Dense density meter. I have covered both devices on this channel with reviews so check those out if you're interested. I have to say that I really enjoy having a device this accurate but I understand that this will only appeal to very serious brewers with a budget for it. Due to the Smart Ref's ultra accuracy of 0.2 degrees bricks this is essentially our benchmark device. Let's now look at the test result. I filled the sample area with my freshly created wart and then turned to the app for the end result. As you can see I quickly got back a result of 1.032 specific gravity and this remained true after temperature stabilisation. This is actually what I was expecting give or take a gravity point either way and we now have our benchmark with which to judge the other two refractometers of accuracy from. Next up we have the Kegland Sabre. This refractometer is much closer to the price of our cheapest refractometer but boasts some useful features like an LED light so that you do not need to stand under a light source to see your reading. The Sabre has been created totally with home beer brewers and distillers in mind and it has a separate scale for SG Wart and Sugar so that each has an improved accuracy. I reviewed the Sabre on my channel not so long ago so for more details check that out. To test the Sabre I applied a few drops of wort on the sample area which is an angled prism. I then added the gate ensuring there were no bubbles which would skew the reading. Refractometers of this type determine sugar content via the refraction of light so I switched on the onboard LED and took a reading. I tried and tried but despite my best efforts I could not get a photo or a video of this due to how these refractometers focal areas have formed but I can tell you that the end result was a specific gravity of 1.033 which is just one gravity point away from our benchmark. Naturally we cannot expect a totally accurate result from this type of device but this is actually very impressive considering that this is for sure the most accurate result I've seen from such a refractometer. This is also consistent with the accuracy of readings I have seen from the Sabre since I first got it and this has been with a variety of different wart strengths though it must be said nothing very high so it may be found that as you go up into higher levels of wart that this raises proportionately. Then lastly we have an unbranded blue box for a 
These are very commonly found online and within homebrew stores. They are sold as a generic device for all sorts of analysis. And really the only thing that changes is the display added into the reading viewfinder. The versions that have specific gravity can be used for water analysis for swimming pools and aquariums for example, but also for brewing, so as such they are not tuned for anything specific, meaning that the accuracy for brewing is not going to be up to very much, but it is fair to say that they can vary. I have certainly owned some that have been more accurate than others, but you will never know unless you have at least access to something that is actually accurate that you compare it to. As with the sabre I applied a few drops of water onto the sample area which is also an angled prism. I then added the gate ensuring that there were no bubbles once more. As before it was not possible to get video or a photo of the reading but it did come back as 1.036 which is 4 gravity points away from our benchmark. This was not a very surprising result for me, though it was on the higher side of the inaccuracy that I have come to expect from these devices, especially considering that we were on the lower side of gravity, which is more like a starter strength rather than that of a med strength beer or anything higher. So this inaccuracy is possible to increase proportionally when measuring warts of our higher strength. Here is now a summary of these results which are consistent with my experiences with each. So what do we do with these numbers and what is the consideration here? Well, this is how I see it personally. Having a refractometer at hand during a brew can certainly make life easier as you can check in on how the brew's numbers are going and make adjustments or additions to bring everything in line with your recipe if and when needed. It is certainly easier and better in my opinion to fix during the brew rather than after during fermentation. I do not use refractometers once fermentation has started for reasons of accuracy and personally use either a density meter or a hydrometer. In my opinion, in a perfect world, we would all use a refractometer during our brews that is ultra accurate, but as I stated before, due to the cost, this may be either totally out of the question budget-wise, or simply unjustifiable for the individual. So I would say use what you feel fits for you, and as long as you are aware of the accuracy, you can judge the readings that you get accordingly. How you react to such readings will also depend on how important you see accuracy too. I have brewed alongside brewers who weigh out all of their ingredients individually using high precision scales and I've also brewed with one individual who weighed everything by feel and sight and that his end beers never disappointed me or him. The two most important things here, as I see it at least, are that you are aware of the limitations of what you use and that you are happy with the end results despite this or because you have narrowed everything down. Either way, as long as you are happy, then that is all that should matter. Why not let myself and the community know what you think within the comments section of this video. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing. For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group, and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store, as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!